Good morning. How are you today? Well, it's a, a brisk, wintry day. It's still in the 20s. It's supposed to get warmer later today. Gray sky. Roads are a little slippery. So I'm trying to watch my step here. The, uh, the times are revelatory of a discouraging Republican profile. Uh, but there's consistency in what's wrong with this profile. It's, of course, disinformation, always, intimidation, constantly, and uh, a push to make America something it's never been except in its worst times. You know, you think of the McCarthy days or our Civil War, or terrible uh, corruption crises like Nixon. And somehow or other, <clears throat> in intensity and in duration, this seems worse, maybe because we're living it. So a good example, going back to the impeachment. Congresswoman Green from Georgia, we know is a, is, is a bad actor. Uh, she believes in things that don't exist. Worse, she publishes them as if they were true. Uh, she threatens with guns and death threats. And when in the final days of the impeachment, it appeared that Congresswoman Butler had something to say that was critical to how Trump rebuffed efforts to save the people from the mob insurrection, uh, Ms. Green came forward and, and threatened her. You know, there are 75 million people watching you. Isn't it enough that you voted for the impeachment? It shows, of course, that she learned nothing, but we didn't expect that. And that's why some of us think she should be expelled from Congress. Such conduct is not permissible. And if these things are said on the floor of the House, even though there's a speech and debate clause that protects members of the House, they should be taken down, which means they should be taken uh, out particularly and identified as inappropriate for the Congress. But we move across the, the country and we focus for a moment on Ted Cruz, who is one of the people who objected to the pro forma counting of the vote that made Biden recognized as the vice pre as the president elect. And so he's he goes back to Texas. Right. And they didn't have time to continue the trial. And Texas does have a special problem. So does he immerse himself doing what he can to facilitate funding and supplies and resources? And this might only be phone calls in an office. Or, uh, but he doesn't do that. His wife sends texts around that, you know, it's cold here. So why don't we go to Cancun? There's a great hotel we can all stay at. And she texts this to other people. And that, that's how we know about it. And because we know about it, we know that what uh, he said, that is, uh, Cruz said, is false. He says, oh, the girls wanted to go down there for a while. Well, no, it wasn't. It was his wife and the whole family, and he was going to go. But he was busted, and so he had to come back and make up another lie. So this is the character of these people. They shirk their responsibility, they try to intimidate witnesses, and they lie. So where's the silver lining? The silver lining, in part, is that the DA in Manhattan County, Cyrus Vance, is looking for uh, a way to prosecute Trump. And he has hired, now several days ago, uh, an old colleague, at least in my first iteration in the office, that's when he was there, Mark Pomerantz. And uh, Mark prosecuted uh, the son of the Teflon Don, no small feat. And for a period of time, he came back after practice to be the chief of the criminal division, which is no easy job. And he's at a, a powerful law firm, Paul Weiss, and he's on leave. And he's already talked to Cohen about Trump's alleged inflation of the value of his properties to get loans. And so uh, the good news is that the stirrings have begun in terms of bringing Trump 
to the bar of the court to answer for his offenses. But finally, the best thing about our modern times in the Biden administration is that we have him out there publicly now saying reassuring things, and we trust that when he says it, he means it. That candor may be the best antitoxin for the deceptions and disinformation that have become the regular course of the Republican Party, at least of those who are in charge of the Republican Party. And there are indications and efforts by some members of the Republican Party to change that. So we can disagree about things that are more traditional in a governmental uh, operation that is going according to regular order. So we have uh, Biden, you know, when there's problems about the vaccines, he's out there uh, through his representatives or himself straightening it out. So we have the latest information. If the CDC says one thing and he says another, then they try to work on it and reconcile it. If they have directions, they try to reconcile that. In other words, we're working the problem and we are coming back building better. And that includes the dramatic proposal to do something about immigration uh, in America and uh, to have a path to citizenship and to uh, make America home again to our tired and hungry masses insofar as we can, insofar as it's legitimate to do so. So uh, have a good day. I'm, I might be on Ari tonight if I can get out of my driveway. All the best. Talk to you. Bye-bye.